Previously on Administrative Law, we looked at the Nova Scotia food case. The Second Circuit found the notice of proposed rulemaking inadequate. The notice identified the subjects and issues, but it left out any mention of the data already in the agency's possession that had led the agency to propose the rule. Without that heads up, commentators would not be able to comment in an effective way. The Nova Scotia food opinion also faults the concise general statement that the final rule was required to include. The concise general statement requirement is set out in APA section 553 in the following terms. Rulemaking. After consideration of the relevant material presented, the agency shall incorporate in the rules adopted a concise general statement of their basis and purpose. Concise and general do not sound terribly demanding of the agency. Had Congress instead stipulated that the final rule incorporated a detailed specific statement of basis and purpose, it would be easier to understand why the Second Circuit thinks the FDA's rulemaking was procedurally defective in this respect. The concise general statement was less than adequate, the court writes. It is not in keeping with the rational process to leave vital questions raised by comments of cogent materiality completely unanswered. The comments alleged that the uniform time temperature salinity rule the FDA proposed would in practice reduce certain species of fish, like the whitefish, to mush, to the consistency of baby food. Everyone knows that babies don't like whitefish. The comments also alleged that the treatment mandated by the rule was unnecessary to assure food safety. The rule's concise general statement was so concise and so general that it ignored these comments altogether. The Second Circuit continued. The agencies certainly have a good deal of discretion in expressing the basis of a rule, but the agencies do not have quite the prerogative of obscurantism reserved to legislatures. What is this prerogative of obscurantism business? It is something that legislatures, such as Congress, possess, but agencies do not. Congress does not have to state any basis or purpose for the laws it passes. Congress can completely ignore comments. And if a congressperson does respond to a comment, it need not address its substance. Here's an example. A few years ago, I wrote to my congressional representatives to urge them to vote for or against some specific piece of legislation. This is what I got back, mostly boilerplate. Need I add that this was the last I heard from the senator's office? They all do it. It's part of their prerogative of obscurantism. And it's not that Congress loses that prerogative when its statutes are judicially reviewed. A congressional statute must be upheld if there is any reasonably conceivable state of facts that could provide a rational basis for the classification. The rational basis test for constitutionality does not require that the legislation have a rational basis. All it requires is that the court be unable to say that in no possible world could there be any rational basis. Moreover, it does not matter in the least what reasons Congress actually acted on. It is entirely irrelevant for constitutional purposes whether the conceived reason for the challenged distinction actually motivated the legislature. A legislative choice may be based on rational speculation unsupported by evidence or empirical data. This is some prerogative. Congress has it. Agencies don't. Courts have a certain prerogative of obscurantism, too. 
A lower court decision will be affirmed if it gets the result right, no matter how cursory, sloppy, or fallacious its reasoning. An agency action would be set aside. It's instructive to compare how Congress makes law with how agencies governed by the APA must do it. Each House of Congress makes up its own rules. The APA must follow the Section 553 minimum. A bill passes both houses. The president signs. Judicial reviews based on the rational basis test. For an agency rulemaking, there must be adequate notice in the Federal Register. Comments must be considered. And there must be a concise general statement of basis and purpose that addresses comments of material that are material and important. And review is under the arbitrary and capricious standard. When you think about it, it appears that the APA requires the rulemaking agencies to be a lot more open and a lot more rational than Congress is required to be.